Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Hey, good morning, Crossroads. My name is Marcus. I'm the lead pastor here, and welcome to our 10 o'clock service. For those of you who are online, thank you for coming out and um, listening to us this morning. But if you're in the area, please come out to Seguin, Texas, and you will come to Crossroads Church, and you will never be the same. Pastor Joel will make sure that feed you lunch, and uh, he will take you around the city and give you a tour. So <laughs> make sure you're here. Hey, good morning. Uh, this this year, we for those of you who are new, we have a, 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 a word of the year, and it's called "Do It Again." And that's the title of this morning's series. And uh, Pastor Joel began this series um, the first Sunday, and he began talking about. The idea that we know that God is faithful. There's certain things that God does repeated. He's not, he's not tired of being repetitious. He'll do this over and over again. The key is there's some things he's asking us to repeat over and over, to be disciplined in our lives, to pray again, to believe again, to trust again, to have hope again. There's so many things that we see in Scripture that you're going to be repeating over and over as, as a discipline, a spiritual discipline in your life that will enhance your spiritual walk. Does that make sense? And so we're kind of looking at, at those things. And then I came in, and if you want to succeed in 2024, the first thing you're going to need is a vision. I encourage everyone to throw away their New Year's resolutions because you probably have failed already. And b- b- because what I've learned is that when, God, when you get a word from God, it's just like get one word. He'll use that word to develop character in your life the whole year. I encourage you guys to get a word. Get a vision. Do it again. It is that word. It is that vision. It is that dream. It is that thing that he's speaking to you about, and he's going to develop in your life this whole year. And if you don't know how that looks like and what that looks like, just call the office. We have an actual worksheet that we can help you go through to help you understand and find out what your word is for that year. He'll speak to you. That's what he does. So we encourage you to do that, to get a word and run with that. Write it down and run with it. My word is appear last year. So that meant like Natty was going to be taking me and asking me to go to certain places. I needed to appear. There's certain things that I was going to be asked to do. It's like, I don't want to do, but appear. It's like, oh, so I had to appear everywhere. Places that I didn't want to go. But I would appear and I'm better for it. So I was looking for another word this year. And he reminded me, he goes, do it again. It's like, oh, okay, so the peers are here again. So if you ask me to come to your house, I will probably appear, okay? And so it's, but there's something that happens when you get a word, he just, he just forms stuff in your soul. Something happens. Something thing, some things break off and other things, you know, hold, you hold fast to. Just a beautiful way. And we also said last week, once you get that vision and gets established and you're running with that, here are two things that always go with every vision, sacrifice and surrender, okay? Get the message last week. A sacrifice, we talked about Elisha. Elisha was a farmer, but he was destined to be a prophet. And so he had to burn plan B. He sacrificed the cow and he burned the plow. That should have been the title. Sacrifice something, you're going to have to burn something. Usually it's plan B because we always want a contingency plan. You burn that plan and you stay focused on the vision and the word that God's given you and you watch God do some amazing things. Today, I I was going to close this series with this idea of just being resilient. And the title of this morning's message is Pound the Rock. It's resilience is necessary. Pound the rock. Resilience is necessary. Being resilient is that buoyancy effect. It's being firm. It's being steadfast. It's being unwavering. I think we lack some of that in the body of Christ today. It's, we're e- it's easy to give up and to try another thing. No, he's one. There's something about being disciplined and staying focused and doing things over and over, the right things over and over again. And all of a sudden, you see the break. It's like, oh, this is working finally. Anybody been spanked over and over again? And then it's like, oh, no. I remember Hayden, who's back here running the camera. When he was a, a young kid, I was, began to raise him. There was this thing that he was doing. When I was driving, he would kick the back of the seat. And I'd say, Hayden, stop that. I don't know what was wrong with him. There was something going on in his crazy soul. He's like, kick it again. I'm like, Hayden, stop doing that. And I'm on my way from Rockport in, on the highway. And I don't know if you remember this, Hayden, but he kicked it again. I stopped the car right there on the street. And I got out, and I got him out, and I spanked him one time. 
Uh, I think he might have shed a tear. Or sure, I'm not sure. But I've never, ever had to do that again. This is when he was like five or six years old. And I love that because, I, I don't know, maybe I scared him or something, but he stopped doing that. Now the kid's awesome. But there's certain things that we have to de- <laughs> All, you know, over and over again that will make us better for it. I call it stay in power. Say stay in power. Stay it's like it's, it's the ability just to, just to stay and grind it out. There's something special about that. People are quitting too fast. I'm going to try this. Marriage like, eh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I need somebody else. This, this chick is not working out. Okay? Well, this dude is like, he's crazy. He doesn't have a six pack. He has a keg now. I don't like him. So, so, but there's something about being disciplined over and over and over again and staying steady to see the results. And that's kind of what we're focusing on. But this idea of resilience, you're going to need that in order to fulfill God's purpose in your life this year. You win, you hit the target weight in your life one pound at a time, right? You, you, you go debt free in your life because some of us are struggling with finances one dollar at a time, cutting back one dollar at a time. Or, or advancing one dollar at a time. You, get, you, you win your children back if, if there's distance in your relationship with your children or people in the family, people in the home, or your spouse or whatever that is. How do you get that back? One talk at a time. You want to you record an album? You have a dream about music and all this stuff? How do you do that? One rehearsal at a time. You want to you win your marriage back? You know, how do, how do we stay here together 44 years and we're still madly in love with each other? <laughs> She's crazy for me. You do that one date at a time, every Thursday, every Friday. That's the date. That's what we do. I don't want to date her tonight. I don't like her right now, but I choose to love her and vice versa, and we just keep doing it. And, you know, it's just a beautiful thing. I'm not saying there's not opposition and stuff to overcome, but I'm just saying it's a beautiful thing. And so this idea of resilience, you're gonna ha- you're, you and I are going to have to get a hold of because it's going to come. It's going to give you an opportunity to quit and to stop short of your ultimate goal in 2024. And resilience is necessary. Grinding it out is necessary. And I don't know how to give you that. The Spirit of God will give you that because that's who the Spirit of God is. It's like, man, he did that again. Well, I'm just going to approach it another way. I'll do that again. Until we get to our destination, until the thing that needs to fall off falls off. Resilience is absolutely necessary. So I got a tons of stories that I could share with you, but I thought I would give, give you a big picture with Jesus, macro view. Jesus went through the same scenario. First of all, he was given a vision. In Luke's gospel, actually in Isaiah, it says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. There's a calling. He has destined me for something. You know, you're anointed to do something. You're anointed as a couple to fulfill something in the kingdom, in the kingdom business. It says, he anointed me to do what? Preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the broken hired. That was his mission. And he went all in on that mission. He burned plan B. There was no plan B. He just went all in. All kinds of opposition. And he needed resiliency to, to, in order to accomplish and fulfill the purpose that God has for his life. And you see that pattern. You see a pattern in Jesus' life over and over again when you read the gospels. The one thing you see is this idea in the desert, how he had to push back, and then in the garden where he had to press in. And in your life, you're going to need those two ideas, something you're going to have to constantly push back and something you're going to have to constantly press into. And with Jesus, right after he was given the vision, immediately the spirit leads him into the wilderness, Luke's gospel, the fourth chapter. And in the wilderness, he had to push back. The enemy from, from, from the temptations that, were, that he was giving him. He was giving him temptations of the flesh, like turn these stones. He was hungry, 40 days and 40 nights without food. So what does he attack? He's going to attack, uh, he attacked Jesus, what he's going to attack with you. Fleshly appetites. Fleshly appetites, man, that's just instant gratification. My flesh is craving for this. And you, 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 you uh, sacrifice, you forfeit your future for an immediate gratification. That was the opportunity that was right there. And he said, no, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The second temptation had to do with taking shortcuts. He goes, listen, I got all the kingdom and the authority of this world, and if you just bow down to me, here's a shortcut. I'll give it to you right now. You don't have to go through all the blood. You don't have to go through all the sacrifice. You don't have to surrender. You don't have to do any of those things. Just go ahead and take a shortcut. I'll give it to you right now. No, that's not how it works. Don't tempt me. 
And so, so he overcame that, right? And you and I are going to have to overcome because the opportunity to compromise and take shortcuts to fulfill the destiny that God has for your marriage and your legacy is going to be constantly there in your life. You have to learn how to push back. The third thing he took him to was the pinnacle of the, of the place. And he goes, hey, I know who your God is, and I, I, I see who you're, you're becoming also. Why don't we just test God? Why don't you throw yourself over this place, and let's prove God's faithfulness. No, we can't do that. We don't, it's, you can't manipulate God into answering your, your, your request. That's good. That's good. Does that make sense? Yeah. And these opportunities are going to be testing God by forcing his hand. These things are going to be constant in your life. And there's others also, but we're going to have to constantly push back. And then you go fast forward all that's the beginning of his ministry, at the very end of his ministry, and all in between, you see the pattern. Right. I just don't have time to go through it all. <laughs> at the end, in the garden, he had to press in. Man, he was being tested. There was holy sweat. He was grieving, drops of blood. He knew he was about to be separated. He knew what he was about to go through. He's like, is there any way I cannot do this? He would press in and pray three different times. Notice that he didn't, even though they weren't there with him, he took someone with him. He needed someone there with him. He needed community. Peter was there with him. John was there with him. They were asleep, passing out, but nevertheless, they got to see what Jesus was all about. He pressed in through those moments because he didn't want to be there. He didn't do it again alone. He had these guys. And it was like, Lord, what, what, can I get out of this thing? And somehow or another in that space, you realize, according to Hebrews, that the Spirit of God began to speak to him and give him the strength to overcome and press in. For the joy that was before him, he endured, is what the Scripture says, right? And he did it again and again. And for the joy, all of a sudden, you get the mission. That mission brings joy. That mission gives you a future. That mission gives you hope. That vision, that, that mission gives you a vision. For the joy that is before you, you'll endure whatever comes your way because I'm not looking at this. I'm looking at that. That's the mission he's given me. Make sense? And so we're going to need the same thing's going to happen in our lives. Fulfilling your vision in life is going to be, it's going to involve something that I call holy sweat. Holy sweat. It's called work. That's what the scripture says, right? And these two ideas is the same thing. And I'll look at those here this morning is the idea of tenacity or resilience and the idea also of resisting. Pushing back, pressing in. Man, I would put that on your, I don't know, I'd tattoo it. Just tattoo it or do something. <laughs> but just like, I get an, this is my time to press in. This is my time to push back. I got to create these boundaries. No, I can't do this anymore. I got to press in. Lord, I don't, I'm tired of doing this. I'll, I'll just do this. I'll do this again. Maybe I'll do it five times. I'll forgive them. Okay, seven times. No, seven times 70 every day. Press in. Push back. Does that make sense? Yes. Tenacity. Persistence. The grind. Resisting. Don't grow weary in well-doing and well-doing again and well-doing again Good. and well-doing again. As a follower of Jesus, you see, as you do well to people, some of them have an opportunity, they take advantage of that. And they, they will use you. And a lot of people are burned because of Christian people. But you can't let the burn, that's what they do. They're not Christian. Most of them aren't even Christians. And you're getting mad because they're not living under the thing that you submitted yourself to. They're not, they haven't got that covenant. They don't, know, right? they don't have, they have no clue. Right. So all of a sudden we're judging them for something that they haven't even bought into. I can't believe you're walking like that. I can't believe you're acting like that. I can't believe you're talking like that. I well, they don't know. They have no clue. All of a sudden, what hurts is when the Christian who should know are acting like that and talking like that. But you can't even let them, who's supposed to be acting different, offend you and keep you from fulfilling what God has in your life. A lot of the people that come to church are individuals who have been burned by church people. Right. Right. And as soon as they come in, I was like, okay, you got six months. Rest, get replenished. Get focus, get this crap out, oh, sorry, get this stuff out of your life. Keep your innocence, and from that place of innocence, keep going. Keep moving, keep moving forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so because it's important, we have to have that. It's this idea. Tenacity is this idea that Greg Popovich uses, and you guys might know this, but it's called pounding the rock. I mean, this year the team is not, they're not very good. They got a really bad record. But I know what Pop is doing. I bet every time, as a matter of fact, when they walk into their gym in their practice ring, they have this thing called pound the rock. 
And they have a, say, a statement here that I'll read to you from Jacob Reese. It says, when nothing seems to help, I go and I look at the stone cutter hammering away at his rock perhaps a hundred times without as much a crack showing it. Yet at a hundred and first blow, it will split in two. And I know it was not that blow that did it, but all that had gone before. And how he uses it and how I use it in life, how I use it with the staff, how I use it in, in coaching myself when I was coaching students uh, or in, you know, in baseball and fast pitch and stuff, I just had routines. Just stick to this routine it, because eventually you'll get it. Like, let me throw the balls. Like, no, just get it and just do this. Just do that. It's like, I'm tired of doing that. It feels like I'm like, gosh, stop it. No, just keep doing that with your ball. That makes sense? So all of a sudden, they realize my daughter right here who's here, that's what I taught her to do. It's like, oh, come on, Dad. There's got to be something else. Man, that was that thing right there, doing that, she's had the, the strongest arm in her, on her team just because of the mechanics of that. And so it's, it's important for us to do something over and over again. It's important for us to just pound the rock. It's, it's tricky, though, because insanity is is doing the same thing over and over and over again and yet expecting different results. But there are some things that require pound the rock scenarios. And it's almost like that rock is speaking to you seven times, eight times, ten times. It's like, you ain't doing nothing to me. You might as well quit. Throw that hammer down. It speaks back to you. It's like, man, nothing's happening here. But 78, 79, 99, a hundred times, all of a sudden, it's... Blitz. It's not that one time that caused it. It was all 99 times that had an impact on the structure of that rock. We just don't see that. But the idea is that, hey, just keep practicing, keep dribbling, keep doing this. And you'll see the effects of it in the long run if you don't grow weary in well-doing. Make sense? Was it worth it? Absolutely. They won five different, you know, championships. And now he's got another group of young guys, and he's doing the same thing over and over again. You remember Eugene Peterson? He wrote the book, uh, he wrote the Message Bible. We met Eugene uh, several years ago when we first started the church down in California. Well, he went home to be with the Lord, but when, when he was in Montana at his, uh, in his house there off the, off the river there, um, he noticed before he went home, he was watching a kingfisher fish. Kingfishers are just known for their finesse in, in uh, uh, catching fish. As he's sitting on the deck there, he was watching this kingfisher um, catch this fish, and he was counting how many times it took for him to catch that fish finally. 37 times it took for him to go over, come back up, and try and dive in, and he finally gets the fish that he was looking for. I don't know if it was the same fish or whatever, but he finally got the catch. And he noticed, he goes, and this thing is called the kingfisher. And he turns around in the crowd, and he looks at us, and he says, hey, how many times have you tried that? How many times have you tried that thing that you, you, you stopped trying? How many, how many times have you dreamed again? How many times have you sang again? How many times have you, you know, pressed in again? Does that make sense? So it's important for us to have that tenacity. How many times have you tried? I'm going to encourage you to, you know, they say don't, don't sweat the small stuff. We need to sweat the small stuff. We need to look at the little things and do those things over till it becomes just a habit in our lives. You've got to dream big, but you've got to start small. Don't do what I did because I went over and was like, man, I'm going to play golf this year. I'm going to focus on golf. So I went and built a little range in the back of the house. I got six acres, just 100 and 150 or whatever. I was watching videos, and this video said, these guys that practice and become professionals, they hit the ball a thousand times a day. I'm like, well, I'm going to try that. So here I go. Man, three or four hours later, I'm about at 800. I'm like, there's no way. And so I wound up hurting my back. I went to the doctor afterwards. He, goes, he said, dude, what happened to your back? Like, it's all swollen and messed up. I was just doing a regular physical, and he noticed that I was wincing. And he goes, well, so let me tell you a story. And I told him the story. He goes, that was stupid. <laughs> and he goes, here, I'm going to give you some anti-inflammatory stuff. Wait about nine days. And afterwards, if it still hurts, I need you to go get an x-ray. And so I was there last night getting an x-ray, because it's like, man, this thing is just like crazy, stupid golf game. <laughs> I could have just started with 75, right? But I just went, it's like, let's do 1,000 a day. Don't do that, start small. Dream big, start small. 
Genesis says, planting and tilling and harvesting, sweating in the fields from dawn to dusk till you return to the ground. That's something that man's gonna, mankind's going to have to do over and over again. And whatever you do, do it with all your heart for the glory of God. What you're doing, even though it's a grind, it's doing it for his kingdom purposes, not your own. Does that make sense? And he says, if you're faithful in the little things, you know, he's going to put you, you're going to be faithful in the little things. What you do when nobody's looking around is what you're going to do when everybody's looking around. Just keep consistent. I have a quote that says, it's not the instant, it's the constant. And I learned that from my pops. He's my hero. That dude is the most steadfast, steady, rock solid man I've ever met on the face of this earth. Just staying steady. Kobe Bryant said, I don't ever get bored with the basics. I love that about him. Tim Duncan, he's the fundamentalist. Why he just stuck to the basics. And it's important. So you'll need that resiliency, that tenacity in life. The second thing you're going to need is community. And even though I don't want to harp a lot on this, it's just the idea is that you can't do this by yourself. We need one another. Even Jesus himself displayed and gave us an example in the most difficult moments of his life when he's pressing in, he didn't do it by himself. Paul needed a Timothy. You know, just on and on, you can just see how God supernaturally would put people together to strengthen them and admonish them and lift them up and encourage them to fulfill all that God has for their lives. And we're no different. There's a story I like to tell, and it's one of my favorite stories. It's, it's Chippy. Chippy was a parakeet. Chippy was a lovely parakeet. He loved to sing, chip, 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 chip. Chippy's all happy. You know, the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, his life crashed. It all began when his uh, owner decided to clean his cage. He'd done it before. And so there he was cleaning the cage. It gets the vacuum, puts the extension on it. Ooh, he's cleaning the cage, and then he gets a phone call. And he answers the phone while he's doing that. Ooh, all of a sudden, he hears that. It's like, oh, my God. He throws the phone down, and he goes in there. He opens up the, the vacuum cleaner, opens up that zipper, and sure enough, he's still alive. Chippy's still there moving around. He's all full of mud and all this kind of stuff. So he freaks out. He goes over and he runs to the, to the kitchen, turns the water on and washes him. And then he realizes, oh, shoot, he's shivering. He's shaking. So he goes over to the bathroom. He gets the blow dryer. He starts blowing all over him. And Chippy's like freaking out. What's just happened here? I was doing good. And he puts him back in the cage. He's okay. The reporter finds out about that story, tells him. He goes, hey, how's Chippy doing now? He goes, well, he's still alive but he just sits in the cage, just looking around. He's a little nervous, wondering if that one thing's going to come again. <laughs> and finally, after several weeks of that, he had to figure out, how can I get this song back in his heart again? Well, how did he do that? He got another chippy. We called him Chirpy. <laughs> and they got together, and in community, they began to get the dream back, get the song back, get connected back. And he became who God called him to be, Chippy. And it's the same thing in your life. Sometimes life comes and it just blows us up, it takes away the song. It's trying to steal the song in our heart, trying to steal the vision that God has for your life. It's one thing to have a vision. It's another thing to fulfill the vision with joy. And having it, we know, just like, man, there's something different about that person. Man, God, he's connected. And a lot of times that doesn't take place until you open your heart up to that person or that family or that individual to get connected with you, to help you in, in your struggles. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I have a few of those guys. Not a bunch of them. Jesus didn't have a bunch of them. He had, a, he had someone that he could, he could go to. It's important for us to do that. You know Israel? You know how Israel got out of the wilderness and into the promised land? Notice what it says in Exodus, the 23rd chapter. It says, little by little. What was God doing? Little by little, he says, I'm going to drive out your enemies before you until you get stronger, until you've increased, and then you'll go and inherit the promised land. And that's exactly what happens. Little by little, God's fighting some of the enemies, and he's dealing with some of the enemies in our own soul to strengthen us over and over again to get us to the place where we enter in and get fulfill the promise that God has for our lives. Isn't that good? We need each other. So this year, man, I just encourage you, 
to get, get connected, stay plugged in. There are several things that we can get involved in. And one of the things that I'm doing this year, and I want to invite you to do it with me, is a sermon group. And really, in the notes where you go online, there's another tab that's going to be on there, digging deeper. And I'll take what I'm preaching on Sunday, but I'll drill deeper down into other scriptures so that you can just go, maybe even invite a neighbor or someone, and you guys study together. Get deeper in your walk with him this year. There's several groups in there. Go online, check out which ones you want to be a part of. If you don't like any of them, just start one. Start one. I can trust you. If you just do the sermon thing, I can help you. I can coach you. I can, I can teach you and train you on how to become a great host. It's only twice a month. That means that you don't have to clean your house every week. So I encourage you to do that. So let me land this plane. Here's your take home. In looking at the big picture of Do It Again series, here's what I want you to remember. I want to snap, snap this because this is something that's very important. One, it's never about what you're going to accomplish or the mission he's given you. It's about who you're becoming. It's about who you're becoming. He's looking for men and women of integrity and character that are able to help the next generation. The second thing is this, sila rest. There's a word in scripture that that word is in Psalms a lot of times. I think it's important to find that space every day to be rested in God, to let him speak to you. I want to encourage you to start your day with silence. God speaks the loudest when we're the quietest. Just practice it. Two minutes, three minutes of silence. Maybe get a pin out. What is he saying to you today? It's important to do that. And the last thing is this. Play the long game. (laughs) Play the long game. This is not instant stuff. This is why I love this series because this is the rest of our lives. Do it again and again and again. Play the long game. It's important that you plant what someone else, you're planting in your life what someone else is going to harvest. Why are you doing that? I want to do it for me. It's like, no, you don't. You want to do it to outlast you. The decisions I'm making in this church right now are not decisions that benefit pastor. It's going to be decisions that will help the next pastor come in here. Somebody did it for you. Let's do it for someone else. We can keep doing this. Amen? Amen. So, man, I'm going to be praying for you all year long that you have the resiliency and you stay connected and let God do what he wants to do in our lives. So, Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the word that is in season. Lord, you know where this lands. And I thank you that you give them the grace to overcome, empower them by your spirit. Let them fulfill all that you have for their life in 2024. In Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said amen. God bless you guys. We love y'all. We'll see you next Sunday. There's a bunch of tacos out there in the gathering place. Make sure and grab one and an extra one for your friend. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.